Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. The Showtime series The Affair is a provocative drama that follows Noah Soloway, a complicated man who's struggling to make things right after his affair had severe consequences. Today, I'm sitting down with Julia Goldani Teas, who plays Whitney, Noah's oldest child, about what's in store for the fifth and final season. Take a look. If the lesson you take from your mother's death is not to try, that's a real tragedy. She knew she was on borrowed time. If you learn how to stay and fight, you got that from Allison. People know my movies and they see me as this action hero. But this bug, this is my story. That's yeah, my story too. <laughs> I don't love you anymore. You walked out on our lives and left me alone with four children. Making this movie, it's bringing up some stuff that I'm not handling very well. All I want is to maintain a co-parenting relationship. You had an enormous fall from grace. And now, you've come full circle. Would you say that the redemption of Noah Soloway is complete? You really need to talk to Whitney about this wedding. It's too fast. You want me to ask her to call off her wedding? That's enough. I fucking hate That's enough. you both! I have no idea what I'm doing here. Just stop by coming in. She's sashaying around Hollywood like she's Nicole Kidman. Helen is taking care of Helen. I feel sorry for you. You managed to turn 50 and not know how to be an adult. And Sasha Man does. Yeah, I think so. He's pretending to be me. You, but he's better. You didn't return my calls for three months, Janelle. After everything we've been through. Noah, get a grip. Could you watch Eddie for me? I don't know what else to do. You brought a child into this world. Figure it out. I've spent my whole life to be the opposite of Allison because I'm so worried that I'm going to end up exactly like her. You are so fucking broken, Joni. I know I am not guilty here. How can it be possible that there's nothing else I can do? I'm sorry, it's all the way, but you're fucked. You had a second chance. Many times. I would do anything, anything to undo what happened. If pain can echo through the generations, so can love. Don't ever let me go. One day, this is all going to be worth it. Everybody put your hands together for Julia Goldani Teyes. Hi. Wow. I have to let you guys know, she proposed to me in the back. and Yeah, we took like bachelor engagement <laughs> photos in the back. So check out my Instagram in like an hour and a half and you'll see it there. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm a huge fan of The Affair and I have a lot of emotions going into this final season. How do you feel about it though? Because you've been on this ride for years now. I mean, I feel really serious about it. So much so that I wore a funeral suit to this interview. You're in mourning. Um, I'm in mourning. Um, I feel really good about it. I think... It's going to be juicier than ever this season. Yeah. And that's saying something because it is such a juicy show. Like every season is so packed full of drama and sex yeah, and this intrigue. This is like the most. It's like they all sat in a room and like, I don't know, um, took pulled from their own lives. There, It feels like the writers sat around and were like, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you? What has traumatized you the most? Let's write that. And that's been so fun to like read and, and play. I feel like in the first episode, I felt like the writers were like, how do we make Britney cry for 40 minutes? <laughs> like, there's a... Uh, that's a spoiler. There's just stuff that goes on forever and ever and ever. Yeah, definitely. There's a funeral that goes on like for like literally two episodes. Oh, okay, good to know. Yeah. Uh, so where do we pick up from with Whitney from last season? Um, so Whitney, last season, had just started dating a new guy. Colin, and right? Colin. And he's from Ireland, and he needs a green card. And um, so she, he's proposed to her, and they're in the process of sort of getting engaged. It's kind of for a green card. It's kind of for love. Um, it's like that first, I don't know if you guys remember, like, maybe living with your first boyfriend, but it's like that situation in your early 20s where you're like really broke and you have like a really bad job um but you live with someone and it's like your first time like sharing a bathroom with someone you're also supposed to be sexually attracted to so like the the intimacy is just like going out the window like they're really annoyed with each other he can't work because he doesn't have a green card and so she's sort of like contemplating straying away from that situation and she's trying to figure out her career but she feels like a housewife and she's just going through 
stuff. That's the beauty of Whitney, though. She's always, uh, I think, a really accessible character because she's always going through real life things that a lot of, of us have gone through. She doesn't always do it with like the most grace. No, but there's no <laughs> grace. She has very poor bedside manner. Right. So how does that change, if at all, in this season? Does she grow up a little bit, or is she still sort of? you know, knocking her head against the wall sometimes. Um, she grows up a lot. So she has a point of view because the show's in perspectives. So it's like a he said, she said. So we have three Whitney point of views this year. And you see that from her own perspective, she thinks that um, that her life is like really hard <laughs> in a way that like a lot of young white girls do. And then also in a way that um, that is very like human and, and we can empathize with. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. She's she's she definitely like is not a reliable she's not a reliable narrator and um but she's much more mature than we've seen her. Okay. She has gone through a lot in in the four seasons I've seen and I would imagine going forward and most recently Vic getting sick and I know yeah. Vic sort of stepped in in a lot of ways as a father figure. So how does his health issues and you know his future sort of impact Whitney? Well, girl has a lot of daddy issues. Um, That's a really nice way of putting it. Yeah. it's. I was thinking, too, like, Noah had an affair, but he also, like, killed someone with her mom. Like, there's a lot wrong. Um, it would be, like, a field day for Freud. And the hot tub. I mean, there's the a hot lot. Tub, there's a lot of trauma. It's late. Yeah, I think it's really hard when somebody else steps in and then they get really sick. So she's still looking for a father figure in the men she dates, yeah. um, which is a rough combination. And then I think she's also looking for a maternal figure this year, and she realizes she kind of has to find it in herself. Um, but she does have a really great boss named, um, well, Andrea, who's played by Perry Reeves from Entourage, and um, who, who she has a lot of like shenanigans with, too. Let's talk about Whitney's parents and her relationship with them, because we just saw in the trailer, she's like, I hate you both. Oh like God. She goes back and forth with how close she is and how distant she is with her mm -hmm. parents. Obviously, her parents have been the source of a lot of her instability and kind of trauma yeah. over the last couple of years. So what has it just been like getting to play with these two actors, Dominic and Maura, who I just think are always a joy on screen? What has it been like for you to have so many scenes with them and to get to sort of like grow as an actor and as Whitney? in this role? With them. Well, I'm obsessed with them, <laughs> like clinically. Um, there's a diagnosis. There's a diagnosis where sometimes I call more a mom and she's like, can you just don't do that? Don't do that one. And she's like, <laughs> I'm like, mom, hi, what are you doing? Because she, I look up to her so much as a woman, as an actress, as she's really, really got her shit together. And um, I always tell her she should direct. She's really She's amazing in all fields. Um, Dominic has been so incredible. He has this huge family, and I've been getting to know them for five years. Um, he has, like, a litter of children. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, he's always been, like, a very... They've both been very collaborative scene partners. They've been, like, full-time acting school for me. And they've also been very caring for me as human beings, which has been really helpful. Which is why you call her mom. Which is why I call her mom. It happens naturally. She, it's just, I just need it. <laughs> I need her. What were your thoughts when you looked at the final scripts for the affair? I know you, uh, we don't want any spoilers and I don't want to give it away, but what I was your like reaction? I already gave one away. I'm sorry. Um, well, from, from Whitney's perspective, yeah. um, we'd never seen Whitney written from Whitney's perspective, which was really exciting. Uh, and I think that Sarah Cheem, our showrunner, has consistently written really um, complex female characters. And it was so nice to see her do that with, with a younger person from a different generation. And she does that so lovingly and um, also so ruthlessly. And so that's been my favorite part is that Whitney is really unlikable and sometimes very likable. And sometimes you hate her and sometimes you love her. And I think that that's the most human thing ever. Um, does that create an interesting dynamic with fans of the show? Like, do they ever come up to you? Everyone hates me. Yeah, because Whitney is frustrating. Do you guys hate me? We love you. Whitney's frustrating, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's very frustrating. Um, yeah, sometimes people come up to me and are like, she's a truth teller, like, I love her. And sometimes people are like, you're super annoying. But I uh, I think it's okay. I think that that's, that's kind of the point. Yeah. You know, and I think this year she makes a lot of mistakes, but um, it's nice to, we humanize her in a lot of ways. She's much more well-rounded. 
I'm interested in your views on how she's changed from the beginning. Like when you first read her description to now, like what is your kind of approach been to her? Has that changed? Like what has her growth been like as an actor to like step into her and like evolve and change? That's a really good question. Um, I think like the first, when I got sent the audition for it, it was like, she's 16, she doesn't eat, and <laughs> she is like a pain in the ass or something. And now we have figured out that she like loves art and loves photography and um, is a really good oldest sibling and uh, is really passionate and loving and super, super sensitive and um, deeply caring. Like there's, there's been a lot of, we've just added more adjectives. Take me through that audition process. What was it like? Kind of like now that we're um, nearing the end, going back to the beginning. Yeah, that was, I'd just gotten back from an internship in Europe, I, I interned for this Princeton professor. We studied the global ghetto, like the evolution of the Jewish ghetto from Rome and Venice to Poland. And so I spent like two months in Europe just studying. And then I came back and this was the first thing I got sent. And um, it was like, I hadn't read a lot of pilots, but it was the best pilot I'd ever read. Mm -hmm. And I just went in twice, once in LA, once in New York. And um, Sarah asked me to cut my hair really short. And I was like, yeah, I'll do anything. And I ended up looking just like her at the time. Like, we both had short black hair. And um, it was pretty easy, but I definitely didn't think it would go five years, which it's been amazing. I'm super lucky. Right. And then I saw, and I think we have the photo on, on your Instagram, you posted a, a photo from your last day, or your last day filming, That's was it? a really cool close-up on my face. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's really on the big screen. Yeah, on Instagram, I love it's that. not as big. That's how it should be. <laughs> so take oh me God. through what it was like, you know, we just talked about your audition process to now like filming your last scenes. What was the mood on set? What was the sort of vibe? Um, guys, this makes me super nervous. Whoa. Uh, this, uh, I mean, the mood on set was clearly, <laughs> he was thrilled that it was my last day and he really cared a lot. Yeah. I love him so much that like any opportunity to troll him and make fun of him is like my cup of tea. I've been talking to him in an obnoxious British accent for six years and I'll never stop. The mood was, I don't know, they brought out champagne and macaroons at the end and um, they gave really cute speeches. Uh, I think it, it was hard because we were on location so it didn't, f it does, still doesn't feel over. It's never over. I was gonna say, it looks like maybe you haven't even fully processed. Like, yeah, oh, I haven't it's over. processed. Should we do that now? Yeah, do you <laughs> want to tell me? <laughs> say it's over. It's over. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. But it's hard to say it's over because we still haven't, the fans haven't, yeah, we seen, haven't seen it. Yeah. Have you gotten to check out some of the episodes? Yeah, I always kind of like trick Showtime into sending me the episodes. I'm like, I need it for PR because I don't remember what was going on. So send me the episodes. And so I've watched four of them, five of them. And um, they're good, they're really dramatic. They're so dramatic. They're so dramatic. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. And the addition of Anna, pa Anna Paquin. Who's amazing. Adds a whole new layer, just so you guys know. They have some scenes where they fast forward. 30 years. 30 years. Into the future. And she is adult Joni. She's adult, yeah, who's um, Ruth Wilson and yeah. Josh Jackson's so offspring. what was, I mean, you guys obviously don't have, like, scenes together, but reading that and seeing that that was going to be something they did, was that exciting for you? Yeah, I'm such a big fan of hers. Yeah. And um, she has this, like, amazing, intense energy as an actress, as you know. And um, that really, she's so determined in the show to figure out how her mom actually died. And um, that storyline is maybe my favorite storyline. It's really exciting without giving too much away, but I definitely was happy that I got to screen a few to kind of get the vibe. Yeah. I'm excited for this season. But, you know, you're an actor. You've got to keep working. So what are you kind of looking forward to now that this chapter is closing? Um, what am I looking forward to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm looking forward to being able to have, like, this little time capsule of my life that existed because I, I started on the show when I was 18 and now I'm 24 and it really feels like I have a little thing to show my kids of like, this is how I grew up. <laughs> don't do that. Um, and, or do Wait, that. Wait, don't do that? Like, yeah. <laughs> do, uh, no, I mean like, oh, don't be do, like Whitney. Don't have an affair. Fair. Everyone dies as a We result. see what happens. Like, People have drown. an affair, don't have an affair, but just like, don't, you know, have sex with weird photographers in their 50s. Fur cat? Yeah, fur cat. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but, 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 but what else am I looking forward to? Well, I've I've done a couple other jobs. That's been really cool. I like being able to hang out with all the people I've worked with, like socially, and less of a 
less in a work environment. Less professional. Less professional. Not that we were very professional on set to begin with. Um, yeah. You mentioned other projects. Uh, you have something going on with FX? I thought somebody was wearing a Make America Great Again hat right there, and I was like, oh. get out. Yeah, they're not, they're al- not. I'm they're sorry. not allowed Red, in It's a here. bad time for red hats. Um, yeah, I did this anthology series for FX uh, with BJ Novak, who I'm such a big fan of, and Lucas Hedges is in it, and O'Shea Jackson Jr., and Lucas plays this rock star, and O'Shea Jackson Jr. plays his manager, and I play their assistant, um, and that's been really fun. It's really funny. I've always wanted to do comedy, and um, I've always wanted to write, too, and BJ gave me amazing advice on that. He was like, just, uh, you know, make stuff you want to show your friends. Do you like take class or still things do things to develop as an actor? Because going from something that is Definitely. so dramatic and then, like you said, kind of switching into comedy and what what kind of work do you do to prepare for that? A, I think the affair is so dramatic that it's funny, <laughs> like unintentionally. Like it's just you know sometimes things are so serious that you're like, wait, if we did this a slightly different way, it could be hilarious. Um, but uh, yeah, I take acting class with. Um, a few people in New York and in LA and I, I'm a dancer. So I try to go to ballet class. I also try to keep like my mind sharpish. I want to finish school. I finished three years of Columbia and I want to maybe, I'm in LA now. So do UCLA? I don't know. What would you go back to school for? I have, so I'm, I have, I'd started my sociology degree, but I kind of wish I'd studied film or creative writing or something. I might just finish sociology because I do really like that and then maybe do something on top of it. So writing is something that you're really interested in, it sounds like. I would love to learn, yeah, yeah. how to... I think you just have to do it, I don't know. I know, that's what yeah. That's what BJ was saying. He was like, yeah. just do it. I, I was thinking maybe I would take like a like a class, though, first, so that I'm, I'm in the right format. You know, I wrote my first like sitcom pilot, and what I did was just like, I found a competition, so I had a deadline. So Whoa. like the competition closed in like four weeks, and I just... Because I need a deadline. I think a lot of writers do. Yeah, that's do. really smart. So just like something arbitrary to like get you writing. Can I read it? Oh, sure. Will you send it to me? <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Why are you Shh. laughing? Because I was just like, oh, it's just like a fun. It sounds great. It was like a fun exercise, though. But I get that like when you have these stories going through your head and like you have these ideas, just yeah. getting it down can be intimidating. It's very intimidating. I'm very intimidated yeah. by that. I would think you could probably like resource some of the writers that you know talk to them i know i've always just kind of like sat at the writer's table at these events and been like so guys like (laughs) how do i start and they're just like shut up just do it what kind of stuff would you want to write i would want to write uh comedy yeah yeah those are my favorite things to watch yeah what's your favorite comedies uh forgetting sarah marshall is my favorite film of all time i was on the plane yesterday and somebody in front of me watched it twice (laughs) in a row i have so much respect for that person I, were they just trying to memorize the line? Literally, I have the entire thing memorized. Paul Rudd as Kunu is like <laughs> my soul. All I can think of off the top of my head is bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Bo- and uh, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. I used to um, have a boyfriend with an accent, and I would imitate his accent only because of that. Uh, anyway. Are there any <laughs> other things within the industry that you're interested in? Uh, obviously, acting, writing. Did you Do you ever see yourself producing? Or I would love to do all of that one day. I think it's just about you know, sitting around and learning and talking to people. I don't know that I'm, I don't know what I'm ready for now. I think I'm just going to keep my eyes open and like learn stuff. But you said you're 24. That's sort of, I think, the most exciting, no, I think the most exciting part about being 24. Yeah. Is is that that there are so many things you can do. Yeah. And all my friends um, are making shit. My friend Annie just, who was an actress, just um, made her first film. It's called Mickey and the Bear, and it was at Cannes, and she wrote it, and she directed it, she produced it, and she's super inspiring. And she was like, you just basically have to sit down for three hours every day and write, and that's it. And that sucks. That's why I don't do it. Yeah, but (laughs) that's, I mean, I used to be a dancer, so they think, like, the one thing I learned is, like, you have to try and try and try a gazillion times. I read that when you, you danced and then you, that's how you kind of got into acting is you needed like another outlet after an injury. Yeah, I hurt my hips really badly. My whole body is like the body of a 95 year old woman from ballet. Um, I still do it though, cause I'm a masochist. And um, I, yeah, I needed another outlet cause I was just like, felt crazy when you're used to having that much endorphin release and then it just stops. I just started like studying really hard and then acting. You know what, that sounds like a script you should write. Do we care? I think we do. I could see like a funny ballerina comedy. 
Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Why not? I'm trying to re- like I'm. T- I don't know what you think about this, but I, I'm trying to figure out like what stories actually need to be told at this like yeah. crucial political and social moment, and what stories were just like, eh, she's that, fine. That's fair, but at the same time, I think like we need like just fun stuff too. That's you know, true. like there's this new show like Sherman's Showcase on IFC, and it's that. just pure fun. It's literally the most escapism, and that's kind of nice too. Yeah, that is really you nice. Know? I love the comeback on oh, HBO. She's Valerie perfect. Cherish. Oh my god. That's do you guys have you guys seen that show? Oh, it's the best. It's dark cringe about like an actress who's trying to make a comeback. And the first and second season it's about me were recorded ten years apart. Basically, yeah. yeah so and it's, it's Lisa Kudrow. Anyway, you should see it. Yeah, we both love it. So this you'll is love sponsored it. by the comeback. <laughs> we're just talking about all these other Showtime shows. Showtime is like, what the hell are you doing? Why did we fly you to New York? Also, watch the affair. It's also a beautiful. It's a really good show. show. It is a really beautiful show as well. And it's it's really well shot. Yeah. We have a great DP, Steve Fierberg, Sarah Tremor. Showrunners really, really talented, and this is all like four people. All of these random people oh, in the background. That's Photoshop. Me. That's me. I was like, "Mom, I'm on the poster." She was like, "Literally." Oh wait, where? this is you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for noticing. Made the poster, big time. Silhouette, <laughs> huge. It counts. I count it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we do have a couple of questions before we get out of here. Who cool. do we have first? Hi, um, you mentioned that you uh, are a big fan of comedy and there's so many amazing women in comedy these days. Is there anyone you look up to particularly and whose comedy you enjoy? Um, ooh. Someone was talking over there, I got distracted. Um, off the top of my head, that scares me. That's a scary question because there's a lot. But I mean, I just rewatched I Feel Pretty yesterday. I think Amy Schumer is hilarious and she's like a great dramatic actress too i love insecure on hbo um i mean all day yeah oh my god she's so great uh i mean obviously fleabag phoebe waller bridge phoebe waller bridger not phoebe waller bridge phoebe waller bridge yeah bridge just bridge bridger oh phoebe bridgers is a great singer that i really like so i get them confused sometimes um that's it all right next one Hi. Hi. Um, with The Affair being such a deeply intense, dramatic show, do you have any good, like, behind-the-scenes stories of, like, ways in which you guys keep levity in between takes? Yeah, no, it doesn't... F- it feels like we're shooting a comedy. Like, <laughs> it, nobody takes anything seriously, and they're such good actors that they just seem, like, really focused when it's rolling, but they're they're not. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um... We 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 had a I had this big scene this year where I had to like cry about a wedding dress or something, and Dominic was just like shoving me. <laughs> He's like, "Do it, do it, just do it, do it, come on," um, and then he made me cry. It was great. That's what we do. That just made me think of a random question. Uh, which parent do you think Whitney is most like? I was trying to figure that out. I thought you were going to ask me which which of your parents do you like the most. <laughs> Well, I was like, <laughs> let's that one first. I They're watching. You, okay. I need to know. So I'll give you the pros and cons. Just yeah. kidding. Um, which <laughs> parent is Whitney, Whitney more like? I think she's so afraid of becoming her mother that she becomes her father this season. Mm. Yeah. That's a really good answer. But I think she's both. Yeah. I think she's very similar to Helen. Yeah. But sh- I think women are more like attuned to the fact that we're slowly becoming our mothers. Well, she also has that, like, grandma dynamic, too. There's, like, this challenging it's dynamic a all the matriarchy. way down. Yeah. So it's, I, I see her very much like her mother and grandmother, but, like, they're so challenging as people that she's like, I don't want to be like Yeah, that. and then she totally becomes her dad this yeah. season. Well, that, if any reason, is why people should watch yeah. this season because he's kind of a mess, so I can't wait to see what... It'd be nice if you if you guys did that. You should. You should do that, guys. The final season of The Affair will premiere on August 25th on Showtime. Please put your hands together for Julia Goldani-Tayas. Thank you, guys. 